Well, good morning. We're on the way to London. <laughs> were the Beatles in London? Yes, they were. Nothing will be a surprise, you know. There's so much written and so many videos, unlike my strawberry fields where I was hunting out a location. These locations, and I'm armed with my notes. I've got my camera gear. Um, what else do I need? Just get out there, see if I can um, follow in the footsteps of the Fab Four. That's it, I've arrived, I'm in London. So, what better way to start this little tour than to head to a location that's just around the corner. So, I hope you'll bear with me on this little journey. I don't know how long it'll take, it might, you know, a few minutes in every location, but I'll try not to waffle, I'll try and keep it to the point. So, let's start here. I'm now in Old St Pancras Church, which is just outside the station. Now, on July the 28th, or 1968, the Beatles needed some new publicity photographs. And they wanted to get away from the recording studio temporarily, temporarily where they'd been recording the White Album. Uh, so with a couple of photographers, I think Stephen Goldblatt and Don, Don McCullen, they went out and they came here and did a photo shoot and it became known as the Mad Day Out. And they went to several places in London, Thompson, Thompson House, Wapping Pier Head and Old Street Station, which I think has changed dramatically now. But they also came here to St Bancras Old Church and at this location there was shots taken of them messing around at the fountain here where they were spitting water and some flower beds which are probably down there I would have thought but well there's no hollyhocks around here now it's autumn uh, there was also a bench where the beetles snapped an old boy sleeping oh time to go to church <laughs> that must be midday or something uh, so yeah, there was a bench where they snapped uh, a man asleep and apparently the, the chap never woke up. So here we have the bench. John, Paul, George and Ringo. No, John, John, George, Paul and Ringo. And isn't that odd that they've got the naming that way? From the Beatles pop group. <laughs> As if nobody knew who the Beatles were, they were a pop group. They sat here during their mad day out. So yeah, that's where they had that photograph with the fountain in the back. And I'm not sure if I'm situated in quite the right angle, but maybe I'll superimpose a picture. And there was quite a few iconic photographs that were taken here. Um, Stephen Goldblatt took the picture that was used on the gatefold for the red album and the blue album, so you know, open the album out and you get this big black and white photograph of the Beatles behind a fence with all the, the people that had, I guess, just turned up on the day to take their photographs. Or, you know, to see the Beatles doing their photo shoot. Let's walk over to the front of the church. There were several iconic photographs taken here. Um, kind of the archway with its ornate sculpturing where the four beetles were stood in the door. Now, does that look familiar? Church open, everybody welcome. I don't know, shall I superimpose a picture? I'm not gonna walk over in this direction because my reflection will appear. But yeah, there's the old, old archway. So yeah, that's the old archway. That's one location chalked off. Where shall I go to now? I know. Let's go here. And there will be a little disclaimer. There might be singing. Anyway, as we walk around the corner here, I am at the location where Decker recording studios were, where on the 1st of January 1962, the Beatles came for that audition. Now, as we all remember, they failed the audition and Decker famously said, um, get 
guitar groups are on the way out and also that the Beatles had no future in show business. It's now the home of the English National Opera. Anyway, some music historians have suggested that when the Beatles did their audition here, they weren't actually performing to their true potential, which led to them not being chosen. And Decker ultimately chose Brian Poole and the Tremolos. And I'm not sure that, um, you know, they had a bad, a bad innings. Yes, they missed out on all the fortunes of having the most prolific songwriting duo in musical history on their books and reaping the benefits of that. But, you know, Brian Tremolo and the... Brian Poole and the Tremolos. Do you love me? Do you love me? And also, silence is golden. Just in case you wanted some earworms, I've now given you some. But I particularly like the way that the Beatles, uh, the Ruffles parody with Eric Idle is interviewing Brian Thigh, who was played by Dan Aykroyd. And they were ruminating over the millions of royalties that were lost by Thigh's company. And Eric Idle says, so, what's it like to be an asshole? So yeah, this is the Decca recording studios. I mean, they had, you know, Moody Blues were on the Decca label. And in the 70s, John Miles. Do you remember him? Music was my first love. So they didn't do too badly. I think it was in, um, in the autobiography by Brian Epstein that he attributed the, the remark. Guitar groups are on their way out. But Dick Rowe denied that throughout all of his life. So yeah, that location, Decca Recording Studios. Right, where to next? I know, let's go here. Of course, it's the famous crossing, Abbey Road. Let's go and take a look. I don't think any crossing would, uh, any Beatles tour would be complete without a little visit to here. I might stand on there in a minute and give you some narration. <laughs> Everybody's got to do a crossing, haven't they? Yeah. It's um, a prerequisite. Now, there's a webcam just up there pointing down at the crossing. I'll put a link in the description. Or it might even be up here on the right hand side of the screen. So you can spend your waking hours watching people paying homage to the album cover, doing their own crossings. Now, many people have speculated about the plaque and the plaque being for Edward Elgar. But actually the reason goes that in 1931 the studio was opened and the first person to record was um, Edward Elgar. And you know him from Land of Hope and Glory. Anyway, enough about that. It looks like people are um, queuing up to get their picture taken outside. I don't know if there's some... <laughs> They're getting... Ah. So it's ticketed, it's a ticketed event. You can go and have your photograph taken at the front, which is not something I'll be doing. I'm not that, I'm not that, um, I'm a fan, but I'm not that much of a fan that I'll pay to go and stand on the step and have my picture taken. I'm making a video for heaven's sake. Yeah, let's cross the road here. So, so much has been said about the, the studios. Uh, Beatles used it for practically everything they recorded. I know that they were, I think, at Trident Studios and they were at somewhere over at Twickenham. I'm moving over here so you can see the studio. Studio 2 is between the two buildings, just here. And that's that building at the back there. Uh, replicated in, by McCartney in Soho, one Soho Square. He's got a replica of the studio underneath. Now in 2009, Abbey Road came under threat 
of sale to property developers and in response the British government protected the site, granting it an English Heritage Grade 2 listed status in 2010 and thereby preserved the building from any major alterations. It's a bit like a safeguard. This slapper Grade 2 listing on it and everything was safe. Now, here's the thing, Cliff Richard and the Shadows, before they were the Shadows, they were the, the Drifters. So, I guess they changed their name because there was another group called the Drifters, right? Now, they recorded Move It here in 1958, making Studio 2 the centre for rock and roll music. So, I'm, I'm, I'm figuring that, you know, if already the centre, all bands want to record, at Abbey Road, and that would have included the Beatles. And it's been a tradition for visitors to pay homage to the band by writing on the wall in front of the building. And I will probably do the same, to be fair. <laughs> Not sure what I'll write. Um, but it's painted over every three months or so. And also in December 2010, the Zebra Crossing got given a, a grade two listed status as well probably at the same time as the, as the house. So just around about here, right on the middle of the, the zigzag line, Ian McMillan set up a, a um, stepladder and the police, or well, one policeman, held back the traffic and he took six pictures just as you know they walked backwards and forwards backwards and forwards just six pictures that's all it took and then he took one shot of the zebra crossing with nothing on it and he took a shot just at the corner there if you can see it just on the wall there is where he would have had a photograph of the actual street sign just there quite iconic it really is and i actually think I might like putting myself out there, what is my very favourite Beatles album? For me, it's Abbey, it's Abbey Road. It's just every single song, even Maxwell Silverhammer is a treasure for me. I love that album so much because it's like the epitome of everything they were trying to achieve. Can you imagine what they would have sounded like? Well, you can imagine because they did it subsequently in all their solo albums. Um, and they've played together, you know. George Harrison played with John Lennon. Ringo played with John and Paul, and um, did they? I don't know if George and Paul ever played together. You'll have to leave a comment if you know that answer. So yeah, don't need to spend any more time here. That's Abbey Road, isn't it amazing? Everyone's doing their little walking stint. Take a picture of me. <laughs> I'm not gonna do that. Right, where should we go next? I know. Let's go here. <laughs> we'll go here. This is Cavendish Avenue, and McCartney has a home here, or did have. Oh look, Billy Fury, singer, lived here. <laughs> I'm gonna see a lot of these blue plaques, aren't I? Wasn't Billy Fury one of the chaps that inspired the Beatles? As he came from Liverpool. Cavendish Avenue, where McCartney had a home, I can't confirm or deny if he still owns the home but you can see the brown gate on my right i'm not going to stop i actually think it's bad form <laughs> you know i stand outside and film it but that that there is the purported home or has he still got it and i would imagine that you know every beatles fan knows it and they're going to come down here the fan who climbed in through the bathroom window inspiring a song on Abbey Road my favourite album which I think I said already didn't I she came in through the bathroom window and she went out she took a picture broke in, took a picture, ran out McCartney's purported to have had to come out and negotiate with her to get the photograph back and of course the incident where John they had, they had a session at the studio booked, but the previous day there'd been some kind of hoo-ha and upset. I mean, I, I don't know, I wasn't there. Um, so 
when the session was booked and nobody, uh, Paul didn't turn up, John was purported to have come in and slung a rock through a window, climbed over the wall. So that's Cavendish Avenue. Nothing to see here, move along. <laughs> I know what, let's go here. Right, we're having a bit of a George moment. I'm now in Boston Place, which the wall behind me here is Marlebone Station. And Boston Place, the Beatles had an office here with their Apple operations. The George moment is from a hard day's night. Now, obviously, the filming isn't this direction. <laughs> it's kind of the other direction. And we'll do that when we get there in a moment. But they used this location to... Um, record some footage of the Beatles being chased and they're running down this road and I'm not going to reenact it uh, but um, they trip up and it's it's one of those wonderful moments that you couldn't have choreographed it or scripted it tell you what lads while you're running down this road just see if one of you could fall over that would be perfect <laughs> he just fell over and um, kind of it's all captured on 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 film and they're all laughing and because obviously it was a case of, on action, I want you to run and we'll get all these people chasing after you. <laughs> it's just a bit of a laugh. Anyway, so this is Boston Place. I think it was probably a little further down here because apparently these downpipes play a part in the scene. So actually, the lamp posts, etc. Funnily enough, that's one thing I was, I've, I've been thinking a little about. If I could ask, obviously there's only two remaining Beatles, but if I could ask them one question, I think it's, it's really quite abstract, but I want to say, what was it like in colour? Because, you know, we've got all these, the black and white movie, I know someone's colourised A Hard Day's Night, but the, the movie was black and white, and the photographs are all from the beginning sort of late 50s when they're at the cavern when they're at you know all around Liverpool and then into the early part of the 60s it's just all black and white and I would like to know what was it like in colour in their perspective so there's the station let's go have a look do you have a question for the Beatles what would you ask them it's, it's, it's so un, it's unchanged isn't it Oh, we're talking 50 years ago, 60. I want to. I want to say I should know, and the reason I should know is I was one when it came out. So definitely 57 years ago. So what you'd have had? This is all the same, and they come charging across here. This is Marlebone Station, by the way. Who thought this would be a good idea? Walking around London. I think the first few locations that I've been to have been so distant and far apart I've had more walking because there's less tubes. My feet hurt. But the next set of um, locations, they're kind of all muddled together because they're in central London, so that is good. I'm just going to walk into the station because there is one scene where they're all trying to hide from their fans. I wonder if I can find that. Supposedly inside a shop, so I'm guessing inside MS. There it is. That's the wall where they would have had the um, telegraph. Uh, telephone boxes I think. right where am I going now I think left or right I know what let's go here just behind me is Old Marylebone Hall which is a registry office and so many weddings took place and in fact today there's a wedding going on so it was here that Paul and Linda got married, Ringo and Barbara got married, and also Paul got remarried here with um, Nancy Chevel. And of course, there's someone getting married today. Best of luck to them. I'm heading for 94 Baker Street, which is where the Apple Boutique was. 
and then around the corner from there is Montague Square and then around the corner from there is Wimpole Street. Oh, there's so many places, even 57 Green Street, the first place that the Beatles stayed. So let's cross the road here. Ooh, chaotic London, on even on a Sunday. Right, I think I've got to go two streets down and then one to the left. A little stroll along Baker Street. Under where 121 beers. <laughs> it could be elementary. Anyway, there we go. Right across the street there, 94. That was the Apple Boutique, or the Apple Store. Apparently, John Lennon vetoed the name Boutique. Now Marsh, Marsh and Parsons. There is a plaque up there, which says, can I read it from here? John Lennon, I can see John Lennon and George Harrison, who we'll go across in a second and, and read up on it. Um, but the Apple Boutique lasted just almost seven months from July through to December and eventually was siphoning out money and they decided to close it down but it was their first enterprise the building looked like this superimposed that color over to that over and see if I can read what it says on that sign. I can see two were there. There you go, I'll read it for you. John Lennon MBE, 40 to 80. George Harrison MBE, 43 to 2001, worked here. It begs the question, why were the other two working when these, when George and John were working here? Right, I want to go to Montague Square. Where is Montague Square? I think it's that general direction. Let's go that way. And it is just here. 34 Montague Square. Now it was here that George, uh, Ringo had the first floor or the basement apartment, which he leased, which means he had the control of it. I'm looking here. John Lennon lived here. Musician and songwriter is, is kind of like, does anybody know that he wasn't a singer and a songwriter? So anyway, it was in this flat, several things happened. Um, we had John and Yoko staying here and they created the album cover for Two Virgins. It was here that, that Sergeant Pilcher of The Yard made his, his drugs bust raid on John. Um, and it's also said that he was Perhaps an inspiration in the song I Am The Walrus, Semolina Pilchard, you know, dripping from a dead dog's eye. Semolina Pilchard. Oh, Yellow Matter Custard. That was my other song, wasn't it? <laughs> Name three songs. In fact, some of you found five, and I wasn't even thinking about Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds. Anyway. Yeah, so here, Sergeant Pilcher made his arrest. The two virgins, Jimi Hendrix stayed here. They had a, a, a makeshift recording studio at the bottom. It was good times, I think. Good times had by all. Yeah, it's quite amazing, actually. It's a very nice, quiet street for a Sunday. Right, I'm out of this area. We're going to head into Soho and just the surrounding areas and then perhaps wind the video up because my video hurts. <laughs> it's been a long one. Um, so where should we go? I know. We'll go here. We are now in Wimpole Street, 57 Wimpole Street, the home of the Asher family. And in 1964, Paul was invited to stay here, and I think he stayed here several years, whether it was on and off. His room was, that window there was Peter Asher's bedroom, I've seen in an interview. And the other side of the building, which we can't see, was actually John's, uh, Paul's apartment. And it was here that Paul wrote yesterday. <laughs> he got up in the morning and um, got onto the piano and wrote, Oh, my love, girlfriend has got lovely legs. I don't want to be so corny and cliché-ish. Cliché-ish. Is that a word? Is that even a word? You know, everybody... Oh, I know a quote about the Beatles yesterday. Scrambled eggs. <laughs> that kind of nonsense. I want to give you something that nobody knows. 
but unfortunately everybody knows everything until we see Peter Jackson's get back and we see some new footage that no one's ever seen before then we're all reliant on the same information um, so yeah 57 Cavendish Street ah, Wimpole Wimpole Street there it is it says so on the sign there Wimpole Street he also wrote um, for Peter Asher a world without love please laugh me away and actually if you click the link here I'm going to put there now is a version by the Beatles which they recorded um, obviously as a demo but it was provided to Peter Asher and the gang but if you have a quick listen to that that's from the anthology right Where to now? I think I'll go here. Number one, Soho Square. I think they're closing the park. I'm running out of time. It's now gone four o'clock. <laughs> That's crazy. So number one, Soho Square. MPL communications since 1970. This is where all the, um, um, the background administration of McCartney's empire is run. But I don't know if it's even open, you know, if they've got the scaffolding. It's probably under renovation. But it's certainly not open to the public. And I guess unless you have any specific business to do here, then you would, um, you would not be invited to come inside. It's nice standing here, though, knowing where it is. Number one, Soho Square. So I think with that... I'm going to, because it's getting dark now, and I thought I'd cover everything off. But I think with all the walking I was doing, I ran out of time. Which gives me a good excuse to do a part two. <laughs> so the London, the Beatles London Walkabout, part one, shall end here. I shall say thanks for watching, bearing with. Drop some comments if you like, if I've got anything wrong. And um, I'd, like, I'd be interested to know what your favorite Beatles album is. Mine is Abbey Road and I'm glad I went there. So I shall say thanks for watching, bearing with, see you in part two or any other video that may come along. Bye for now.